we are basically the protector of assets. Whether you're a business owner, you own Wuhan Social, you own Startup Grind, Man's Enterprise. <laughs> what music does, it's that thing that speaks all different languages. Even if you don't understand the actual language, like I went to H&M this week, and they were playing English music in the store. I went to different stores and they were playing all kinds of different songs. But it's not necessarily in a foreign language, even though I'm in a foreign country. So that's the power of music. We may not understand it, but we are bumping our heads to it. We're doing this because it's like, it's, it, it's capturing your emotions. And so that's what we do. So one of the biggest, most noted cases in the music industry is this young lady right here, Michelle Pham. Uh, she's a beauty blogger in about 2005. Around 2006, she started her YouTube channel around 2007. As you can see, she gained over six million subscribers. Think about that for a second. So, and that's a lot of success. And you know, anytime you are famous on Yuku, YouTube, brands are gonna come after you. They're gonna say, hey, I want to introduce my t-shirt to your audience. I want to sell my cell phones to your audience. And that's why it's very important to have a big platform. So as you can see, her most noted videos Barbie transformation. Look at that right here. 50 million times it was viewed. Think about that for a second. 50 million times. And then she did the Lady Gaga, how to look like Lady Gaga over 45 million times. So that's a lot of success, right? And, and, and the thing is, on YouTube, which most of you know that's an American uh, platform, uh, and it, uh, it, like the, the payment is pretty small, but the more subscribers you have, like this girl, the more views you have, then of course the money adds up. See that right there? 2014, Michelle, she's been accused of nearly 50 infringements. 50 infringements, meaning that all those times when she launched on YouTube and, and doing her vlogs, as a beauty person. After she became popular, that's when record labels, publishers, start to accuse her and say, hey, 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 you used like 50 of my songs in your videos. You never asked me for permission. Guess what? They want some of that money. So that's what that is. And so that's why we are protector of assets. We are here to protect you as business owners so that no lawyer can come and dig into your pockets, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, as a musician, we're making sure that your songs are properly protected. Let's dig a little deeper. So look at this for a second. Over $100,000 US, which is over 700,000. Why? Do you see that? Each. So you all can do the math, right? That's a lot of money. And I don't know if you guys are rich like men, but I don't have that amount of money. <laughs> and uh, so, and the funny thing is, I'm one of these guys right here. I'm a publisher. So there are two sides. So we protect assets, that means with us protecting the assets, your assets and business owners and musicians, you shouldn't fall, you shouldn't have this big fall. This shouldn't happen to you. You have to always be careful of what you do online. And it's like, I always say to my clients that you get excited and you get into a recording studio, you wanna record an album, and your, your mom or your brother sits in the recording studio with you and you feel okay, it's my brother, it's my mom, it's my, it's my uncle. She's like, no, no, no. Guess what, when you get comfortable and you release that song, I promise you, 10 years down the road, that same brother, uncle, like, hey, you have 
100 million views on this song? Where's my money? Where's my cut? You're like, what cut? I gave you the first lyric in the verse. No, you did not. That's, and you start fighting back and forth. But that's where we come in. We protect. How can entrepreneurs avoid this similar fate, this similar pitfall? By asking us, d Media, by coming to us, hey man, um, I want to release this song, what should we do? Hey man, um, I'm starting a restaurant, and I, I, I want to play songs while the people are lining up to eat, like what do I do? That's us. Don't take on the headache to say, you know what, I'm just gonna play music and whatever happens, happens No, You don't want to fall in that pit like Michelle. But at Demoners Media, we give music creators, business owners, peace of mind. Here's the reality. Music creators struggle to protect their music and collect royalties, right? And business owners need the right to use music in their store, in their restaurant, so let's talk about this for a second. Let's say most of you probably have QQ music, right? Uh, QQ video, or you know about Tencent. Now, if you come to Start a Grind or you come to the Father's Space and they have music playing in the loudspeakers, and you as a creator, like, hey, they're playing my song. Now, here's the thing. Whether you're playing your song on the loudspeaker or you're on the stage performing that song, you have the right to go back to your publisher like us and say, hey, I heard my song at Thunder Space. And I said, okay, what date, blah, 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 blah. Now, if Thunder Space didn't acquire a license to do that, then that's where we come in to help them through that, to help you through that. So it's very important to have all this stuff worked out before you launch out as a musician or as a business owner. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, my name is Dean Reynolds, and I'm the CEO and founder of Dean Reynolds Media Group. And we are a media and entertainment company. Um, and they call me the protector of assets, which we do. We really try to protect your assets. And basically, this simply means that business owners, musicians, creators like yourselves are well informed with the right license to have. Um, and we just want to protect your assets. Like, that's our tagline. Because if your assets are not protected, then what are we doing? Like, you don't want to just be out there and not protect your money, not protect what you own. So it's very important as entrepreneurs to protect your assets, all right? And basically we offer music consultation, so you can always call us or go to our website and say, you know what, I need to find out how to register my song. You know what, I need to find out how to get the right license to play music in my restaurant. What do I do? So you can book the consultation with us. I'm a public speaker, music publisher, Basically, I have over 20 years in the music industry, and we manage over 8 million streams, digital, digital streams, tour as a, as a musician, and I'm so excited about this right here. I'm working on my first book, and it's called What the Heck is Music Publishing, really, and it's for uh, entrepreneurs and music creators. And these are some of the brands that we've worked with. <laughs> including found the space, yeah. So let's look at this chart. Every time I look at this chart, I literally feel hungry. This is a pie. See that right there? Delicious pie. Now, it's a breakdown, two sides, of the rights owner and the artist. So let's say, what's your name? Juliet. Hey, hey, how are you? Juliet. So let's say Juliet is the artist and Alavia is the rights owner. So who shares this pie? So Juliet records the song, right? And 
and she can be viewed as a musician as well. She can be her own publisher, I mean her own producer. Um, so if you are the producer of that song, then you own the master. So it's, it's simple, if Max produces a beat and he plays it in his shop, in his store, he owns the master recording of that, nobody else. So whoever produces, if it's two people, then two people own the master. And the record label will be the same person that owns the master, whether it's independent or it's, you, you've got a record deal. So right here you have composer, lyricist. So let me just talk about this for a second. Not every song you hear on the radio means that that person sing, that's singing it is a writer. Right, so many times you hear a song and they have 10 writers, five writers. All right, so these are the five main functions of a music publisher. I won't stay along with them, I don't want you guys to ask a question. Let's talk about this right here. Acquisition. Say after me, acquisition. Acquisition. <laughs> yeah. So acquisition is basically when you either acquire a property or let's say uh, found a space and says, you know what, um, I like Wuhan Social, so I want to purchase Wuhan Social. I want to acquire Wuhan Social. So that's acquisition. So that's on the entrepreneur side. On the music side, as a music publisher, my job, our job is to go out and seek talent. So we'll go to Matt, so we'll go to Julie, Julia, and yeah, and we'll say, hey, I like your song, I like your voice. Um, have you recorded anything before? And so that's what acquisition is. And this is not really in any particular order per se. Now, this right, this right here, this is a very important piece right here. And tell me if I'm speaking too fast. <laughs> it means that anytime we get your song, it depends on the deal that we have with the songwriter. And our job is to exploit meaning to send your music to Tencent Music, to send your music to Music Info, to send your music to BMI, to send your music to radio stations. That's what exploit means, so that you can get the exposure. Got it? Okay. Now, administration is basically what we do. So sometimes we do this, sometimes we don't, depend on the deal. But this right here is every day, 24 hours. That means we do all these things right here, collect and we project. So this part right here is what a lot of artists are missing, musicians. They sing and they don't know where their monies are. They just sing, they perform all over the world. They do tours, they sing in clubs, which I'll get to in the next few slides or so. But these things are very important. Music licensing. Music licensing 101, so let's run through this real quick. How can you use a music video? Music license, uh, master license. Uh, this right here is what this young lady needed. So we talked about this young lady earlier, right? Let's just bring up the umbrella right here. So, this girl, Michelle Fan, if she had what's called a sync license for her videos, she wouldn't have had that before. So blanket license is basically if you own a club or a restaurant or a concert venue, it's basically you need what's called a blanket license to have the right to play music in your businesses, all right? And television performances. If someone sings your song and they're gonna perform your song on TV, they need to pay a sync license fee. They need to contact you as a publisher or the songwriter, depending on the deal you have, and give them the right to do that. They can't just go on television and perform your stuff, okay? All right, now at Live Venues concert. So let's talk about this for a second. So she, is a YouTuber, so she needed the sync license. 
Facebook that we have in America, when you go Facebook Live, you no longer can play any music in the background. You need the rights to do that. However, any music that gets played in the background, that songwriter gets paid, get, gets royalties, all of that. For bloggers, Instagram, all this stuff, you can uh, monetize your stuff online. So these are some of our, so let's talk about the music industry in China. One of the biggest deals that right now, Spotify signed with Texan um, a few months ago. This right here now worth over 12 billion US dollars. I mean, that's crazy. Spotify is a Swedish company. Tencent is a Chinese company. They merged these two of these platforms. And Spotify is looking to open an office here in China as well. But that right there, and Apple Music is another music giant that we all know. We all know about QQ Music and QQ Video. Now, if you were releasing a song, and you said, I want to tap into the Chinese market, these are you guys right here. Music Info. Take a good look at them. They will send your music to listeners in China. That's crazy. My name is guys. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing time. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you for your amazing speech. And if I am a songwriter, I will definitely help you, hope you, hope you could protect my rights. <laughs> <laughs>